Welcome back to the podcast. It is the writer's block featuring myself, Todd. And of course we have Andy with us and in the background, you might be able to see him, but that is Captain Sully. Uh, Sully, do you, do you see us? Do you hear us? That's a no. Uh, he definitely can't hear us. That's well, you can hear me obviously, but uh, he's just, I don't know just, what he's doing. He's focused on something. That might he's be. Na- a, he's napping. Yeah. That's just that, a different, different way of napping. Yeah. I was going to say, I, um, that yeah looks comfortable. So uh, tell us, uh, you just had a new story come out, right? I had a new story come out last Monday, or yeah, last Monday. Um, it was the prequel to Irrational. Um, I do have a question for everybody: What is the best way to m- promote my uh, or promote our? podcast and in our own individual writings because i've promoted it up to this point twice and i've gotten a whopping 12 views on the story so, so where do you normally advertise that uh social media so facebook instagram twitter and linkedin uh, how frequent how frequently like uh just so once i did ins- i've done ins- i did instagram twice facebook and linkedin twitter only once so I, I need to up the ante, but it's still, I don't, I don't know. Cause the other day I was like mad because <laughs> I, up to, up to that one, there was, I could at least get 30 views. Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, an, another question to add on to your question to the audience would be of all these um, social media posts, which ones do you see or which ones don't you see? I mean, obviously if you don't have a LinkedIn, yeah, I can see that. But if, if you have a Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, you always see those messages i facebook the story goes away after 24 hours and then or not facebook sorry instagram and then you can see how many people have seen um that and then facebook you don't really know how many people have seen yeah. and then linkedin it tells you how many people have viewed it I don't even think my last post hit a hundred, hmm. which well, I guess my next question then, um, as a potential, well, as a, as an audience member of your works, of course, uh, you can, we can reach your, uh, God, I got to stop saying, I uh, mean, if you subscribe, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to your website, you, right? Yeah. If you, if you subscribe to my website, you can get, you'll get a notification. So, so that's interesting because I, I did subscribe to your website and I did not get a notification the, for either of your two new stories. So I'll, I'll have to look. I think you have to be a, a member or you have to you subscribe, oh. but I think there's an extra step. Like you make, have a, make, make an account with Wix or something like that? That or you, you just use your email that you signed up with. I have to, I have to look back or I have to look at that and get back to you guys. So they, get with your IT people. See what's, see what's going on there. <laughs> yeah. But it, because it, it says how many subscribers I have and then how many members and the list is like half. And I'm like, okay. And then I forget to figure it out because I'm doing something else. And I just happen to check, the, you know, the views. Yeah. I'll say this Whatever. actually, now that I think about it, I didn't see any, I didn't see your tweets for either of your recent two stories mm-hmm. on the Twitter, you know, uh, otherwise I would have retweeted them. That's weird. I, I, and I also, I'll have to like click on your page. Well, that also comes to another question, like, what's a good time? Because I was told Friday at 4.30. Yeah. One time did that, almost got 200 views on my Instagram story, and it was everything, everybody was looking at it. Yeah. Did it the next week or the next time I had a story? Maybe 75. It seems like the best way to do it is just, like, maybe three times a week, you know, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, something like that, and then uh, see what happens. Also, I, th- I think one thing that really help is, you know, audience members that enjoy the work, spreading it through their own social media as well, so that we can have mm. a, a network going on. You know, that, that's something that I, that I wanted to do with Twitter with other indie authors, and uh, I've mostly failed at that thus far. But well, that's um, funny because my one friend she recommended, she's like, maybe you need to find someone or more an audience that reads more than you know some of your followers from college or high school <laughs> yeah like that's well, yeah. i mean that, that's that also the, works that's the main that's goal, the goal. Is, you know, yeah you, you use like the people you know as a sort of platform to reach the next level of a an audience that you don't actually know personally but 
reads your content or enjoys the content, you know, stuff like that. That's the, uh, it's making that transition. That seems to be the most difficult. It has been for me. I've been trying to make that step for a couple of years now. I, and I don't want to like shove it in everybody's faces, like doing it constantly. I know we talked about it before how you said someone yeah. has like a, one of your followers or that you used to follow used to promote their works like every what, two hours. Yeah. It, that was so, a very extreme example though. I, yeah. I think, you know, three or four times a week isn't anything, but okay. 10 times a day might be a lot. Yeah. 20 times a day, I should say. And I'm still Most working time. on my audio part of it because they're, they're also like, maybe it's easier for some people to listen to it rather than, you know, stop what they're doing and read it. They could listen yeah. to it while they're, you know, cooking or cleaning or driving or walking. Mm -hmm. So I just need to like dedicate a day and just, just do it. I crank out maybe three or four. Yeah. Recordings. Do it on a lunch break or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, Rent a little sound studio or something. I mean, I could do it here. It's just, you just got to shut in and focus. Yeah. That, that is the key. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, writing, stuff like that, I guess a good topic for today is going over the pros and cons of writing. Um, it is a very broad topic uh, that could really go anywhere. I mean, you could probably, we could probably spend hours talking just about this one thing. You know, there's so many, there are many pros. Depending on what you're doing with it, there can be many cons. Uh, what have you, what's been your experience with writing? Your, uh, well, when it comes to, you know, the pros and cons. A pro and is that I can, I guess I can express my, I guess, I don't know, artistic, because it's artistic yeah. talent and, you know, yeah. in a way that not a lot of, well, a group of people only understand, like other writers can only understand, because I know some people that, are like I don't understand how you could write five pages in like an hour and a half and have it sound like this. Yeah, I'm like I just you know. So that's a, it's a pro that I can like express how I want to write and how I feel and create a world or you know a mini world that brings entertainment to people. I guess is a pro for me anyway. I mean, yeah. a, a con is job <laughs> that you want to do that doesn't involve you know working for a marketing team or, or a social media team yeah which is tough because i've looked and there's not right now anyway i can't find something that you know i also could be looking in the wrong spot but that the, the biggest but the biggest pro definitely is being able to create something that people have never really seen well, they've seen it, but in my own, with my own twist and stuff, that's like uniquely mine. And then the con is finding a job just to be able to do it and have a yeah. decent source of income. I don't know. What's your top pro and your top con, I guess? Uh, I mean, the pro is basically the same. It's a, it's a yeah. great tool for expression, you know, uh, to be able to put your thoughts on paper, so to speak. It's, like for me personally, like I'm not, I'm not the most like, I guess, talkative or open about like, you know, life stuff. And so sometimes writing is a good way to kind of, I guess, not vent, but work through all that in a way, you know, you can take, you know, things that you go through and then put it on paper in this unique way. That's obviously not always a one-to-one -one situation with yourself but it's kind of a, a way to yeah, just express what you've gone through and stuff like that. So for me, it's like, it's like kind of like keeping a journal in a way where you, you, you write about whatever's going on and you just, you can, yeah, I don't, I don't have to describe it perfectly, but basically it's a good tool for expression, a good tool for creative expression and so forth. And then the biggest con is uh, I would have to say that's, kind of the same it's hard it's very difficult to make a living off of writing on its own it's difficult to find any kind of job i, I thought once about maybe trying to be a screenwriter you know working with you know, television shows or whatever and you know, that's difficult you know i thought about writing for video game companies i thought i would be 
cool you know, quest developer or whatever and then but you know that same kind of thing where it's very very like it's very difficult to get into those positions and it requires a certain amount of schooling and I've uh, it's always like well what's uh, the, the risk versus the reward of going in that route it's there's no there's not really any stability in terms of trying to make a living off of writing so if you want to be a writer you have to be ready to be patient <laughs> like very patient and also i mean if you really enjoy writing you're not gonna give up just because you don't make a hundred thousand dollars in your first year like i mean i've been i mean we've both been writing for years and it's mostly because it's a passion it's not it's more than just a job and that's that's how i look at writing too is it's yeah. i'm ready like i would love to write as my job but i'll always write for myself at the very least you know and i'll, I'll share it with the world of course but if it's good enough that's how i also look at it yeah. too uh, if yeah, it's, it's good, good enough. enough all my stuff's really good though you know <laughs> um yeah I, I, just about everything i, I write I, i'm willing to put out there's there's only been a couple things that I haven't, things that like, I don't know, feel weird putting them out. So they're tucked away in a folder on my computer, but almost everything I'd, I'd be willing to throw well, out. There. I had a couple short stories that are like, I questioned if I should put them out. And then I just said, you know, screw it. It, it kind of touched last week on last week's episode, how we have personal, um, ideas and experiences put yeah. like written down in, in a story and I, a couple of them did and i said you know what screw it i don't really care <laughs> yeah it, you're not gonna unless you really know who i am you're not gonna figure it out so yeah, yeah it, I, I had one like i had one story that i i, I sent into a you know, like a little short story competition. I need Didn't to win. do that, by the way. Sorry, that was but a self reminder. I need to do that. I should. need to find some place to do that. There's a there's a there's a lot of them. Um, too many of them, probably. <laughs> but I, I submitted a story to one. Name. It was it was kind of a personal story. It was, um, but but it was you know personally inspired, I guess you could say. But didn't really, you know, make, gain any traction with the judges. And when I at the end of the day, I decided not to put it on my website, although I might in the future. I'm not really sure. It's basically the whole story is just an inner monologue of this person uh, trying to come to a decision, you know, about something. And it's, yeah, but it's, it was, um, I don't know, maybe someday I'll put it out one day. I, I, I think the mentality we need to start having is with, if our writing is, as long as it's not utter lack of a better term garbage yeah like we should just say you know what it's something that we need to just release to the public and see if it gets a positive review or a negative one because you're not going to have four thousand you're not not everybody's going to say oh this is fantastic but you're also not going to have everybody say oh this is utter trash like this is terrible why would you even think about writing something like this yeah i do think that generally speaking there's always somebody out there who will probably like your content, you know? I mean, I don't think it, like everyone's got their own little niche, so to speak, but of course you want to have as large and general of an audience as possible to have you know, the most amount of profitability and sustainability as a writer. But and also like, I guess in that way too, if you're, should you stick to a specific genre, you know, if you're writing for, a general audience, but I mean, that goes into a, kind of a different topic. We're looking at the pros and cons of writing. <laughs> such a such a general uh, topic. It is. I mean, like, I guess another, I mean, another pro is other than being profitable. I mean, it, but I guess it goes along the lines of like, the more profitable you are, the more, obviously, the more successful you are, but also it, it's like, make, it makes you feel good that, okay, I've made, x amount of dollars from this one story or this one book yeah. that people actually find entertaining and that i guess it's self self or self-worth and understanding too that it, it helps like, like oh okay i i may i created something that brings joy and entertainment to people like like last month i got a uh, uh a deposit from amazon from uh kindle direct publishing and I, it, was, it was only like a dollar and 70 cents, but 
you know, it's, it's kind of like a reminder that someone's reading my stuff. You know, yeah. Someone's, you know, I mean, I don't know how much they're reading, but someone, you know, gave it a try. And it's what well, every time I get a Wix notification, I'm like, okay, someone out there, whether it be in the other night, I got something from Montana. I was like, I don't know anybody in Montana, but okay, that's cool. Another one was in Chicago and I don't, I don't know anybody in Chicago, but it, it, it's like, okay, they're either, they're at least engaging in my website. Um, but that's, uh, sorry, I'm being just, I don't know what my cat's doing. <laughs> I just watched him get up. But anyway, but it, I, it's like, someone's engaging in my website and hopefully in some, some sort of capacity, my work too, or, you know, yeah. I think part of the idea too is I mean, part of the hope maybe is to get a snowball going, you know, and over time, the snowball gets a little bigger, but bigger, you know, your audience gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And eventually maybe it can be big enough to do a book summoning or something like that, or some kind of event. I always wanted to do that. Let's go to, um, like conventions or something like that and just maybe pass out free books you know, yeah. my own books just to kind of say hey just read it you know leave a tweet about it say hey this this was good or you know Don't something like that. yeah i mean you're you're lucky in the sense that you're like a step ahead of me in that regard where you could go to a convention and you have something in your hand that you've already put out there and be like hey here's a here are people that we all have the same interest here. Read this. This is, you're not my friend. I don't know who you are. Read this and leave a review. I, yeah. you know, I can be like, here's a URL <laughs> on a website. Yeah. I've got like 12 short stories that you want 13. Yeah. I mean, in the way, 13, like, you know, like, at the same time, I mean, you still have, um, you have more, you have a larger variety of content. I've only got, I've got three books, but one of them is a sequel to one of the other one so they really only got like two uh i don't franchises i guess whatever you want to call it or uh series and then also i have a handful of short stories but it's all a lot of it's also kind of dated the newest story came out last year or the newest book came out last year you know i mean my i think i mean i have a this year I have the irrational one, like the, and then I have the prequel to that, and then I'm going to release the final, like third chapter of that, and then that that I guess that's a whole separate. I mean, I wish I could incorporate that, like publish that into like a mini something, but it's not. I mean, that's that'll be twelve pages total between yeah. three stories. So you, just, you can't really, I, I you don't know, you can't really publish something like that. Now, one thing you could do, now, actually, what I would recommend doing is when you've got, let's, uh, you should compile all your short stories together and, and until you have maybe like 200 pages worth of short stories, and then publish it as a <laughs> compendium Yeah, on Amazon. That's what I did with, uh, I had this series, it's called Archer's Conundrum or something like that. I, I think I've talked about it a couple of times. Uh, I, the book's over there somewhere out. Uh, but it was basically, 11 short stories that were somewhat interconnected on a meta level, I guess, but they were largely just independent stories. I just threw them together and, you know, they're probably one of the cooler things that I did actually, because they were just, you know, short stories all bundled together and have a lot of variety in terms of genre. You've got a little bit of romance, a little bit of Western stuff, a little bit of dystopian future uh, robots, AI run amok, stuff like that. And so there's a lot of... It, it would be interesting to see how many... Uh, if I made one big Word document with all of them together and see yeah. how many pages it would be. Yeah, I mean, also, you'd, you'd have it formatted. You have to have it formatted in a specific way if you wanted to have it like available as a, a hardcover and a paperback, stuff like that. And so technically, it would kind of shrink it down a little bit. So it would actually lengthen the amount of pages it would be mm. and also you can throw in uh, chapters stuff like that so we can uh, have it all organized it, it, it's pretty cool it, i've learned a lot about how to use how to do all that stuff with microsoft word so i could show you how to do it or i could do it for it as uh, long as you don't charge like 200 dollars an hour to do it yeah 200 bucks a second 
<laughs> That's how you make money as a writer. Uh, I guess I came up with another con. I know I had a someone tell me that they wanted to be a writer too, and then they, I think the direct quote was, "Then I turned twenty and realized that I'm not a child anymore, and I actually have to live. I have, I have to live in the real world, and I, that that kind of hurt for a little while." Yeah, well, I would argue that that person is not an actual writer. It, yeah, because it kind of goes back to what I've said before, where part of being a writer is like, you don't always do it as your main, like for a long time, you're probably not going to do it as your main job. Like I've been writing a lot for the last several years, but it's not my main job. It's not even, it's not even my main hobby probably, but I still write because it's, it's just something that I, I'm passionate about, you know, I, that doesn't make me a child. It would make me a child if I was, you know, maybe waiting. If I didn't have a job, I didn't have anything going on and I was just writing endlessly. Maybe, you know, I, maybe, I, maybe I'd be a little naive to think that I could actually make a living right off the beginning with no, nothing at all. But I think, I don't know, I would say that that person, whoever they were, is a bit misguided, I guess, you know, they, they can still write and have a, another job. That's Something. exactly what you and I both do. Yeah. So they might've thrown away a potential career in writing. You know, maybe yeah. their second book would have really taken off or something. Maybe they would have gotten a letter from I, It's House. definitely, I think you definitely are, you need a stroke of luck. Like yeah. I know I've read somewhere that JK Rowling was homeless yeah. at the age of 30. Yeah. And it's... then all of a sudden, I don't know how she came up with 200 page Harry Potter novel. And then that all of a sudden just took off. Yeah, I, I really need that sort of struck or I, stroke of luck. I've never read the Harry Potter I series, mean, but I did read about how I. she took her experiences as impoverished and and used that as like the backstory for Harry when before he went to you know, Hogwarts. Yeah, I was about to say the Wizard of Oz, but that was a completely different uh, <laughs> Hogwarts. Uh, but. I think yeah. it shows that we need to culture ourselves and actually read that series. I, you know, I've, I've got the first book here. I've, I've read, read the first one like years ago. I, I, just, I don't know. I've read the first one. I've seen the first movie and it's just like, I, I, I don't know. I, don't. I have, okay, okay, this is probably one of the biggest cons of, of writing and also just reading is that I have a huge backlog of books I need to read. And, you know, Dune is the first on the list at the moment. And I don't even know when I'm going to be able to start that. And so to to get through that and all of that, and then the entire Harry Potter series, I want to read Lord of the Lord of the Rings series, The Hobbit. I want to read um, would, will need Harry Potter eventually. Maybe I don't know if I'll ever get to that. To be honest, but I I too much to read. I, my every my grandmother and my aunt, and then her kids and my uncle. They all like every time the Harry Potter series came out. Uh, I think my grandmother, she would buy the book, read it, and then send it to send it to my aunt, and then they would pass it through. Oh, that's like, pretty cool. Yeah, until it was done, and then they'd send it back. I'm pretty sure, that, and then it, and then obviously they would go to the library too. I think to, if they didn't want to wait, but that was I don't that was a long time ago. I do want to add that the reason that I haven't been reading that much is because I'm in four classes. Yes, so, he is in school, bettering uh, himself to find a better job than what we currently are in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully a writing job, but very, very uh, That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping my website just takes off and I don't have yeah. to go but, back to school. Yeah, for that, that is a long-term goal is just, you know, keep working on a sort of main career, but then you have this like side quest where you're like trying yeah. to really build up your momentum to be an actual writer. I mean, I re I read an interview by uh, who uh, they interviewed Ace Atkins, and I read I've read one or two of his books, and he's also an author in a he authors a different uh, series of books where the original author is deceased, and that's a whole different topic that we could talk about. But he talked about how his he he. Part of it was that's his main, that's his only job. But beforehand, it's funny. He used to write for the Tampa Bay times. It was used to be the St. Petersburg times back in the day. Yeah. 
Yeah. And his newest book that just came out was based off of a Tampa or is it? It was an Ebor City like crime that happened. And he covered the whole thing, like start to finish. He went to the courtroom and um, it incorporated bits and pieces of what he like saw into his novel. Uh, but side, sorry, that was a side note, but he, he rented his own, like he has his own office space to get out of his house because he's like, I would be distracted if I was in my own house. And then he just like went through his entire day, you know, go to the office until right until maybe noon, eat lunch, go work out, go for a walk, come back, do some more. I think he's tried to, he tried to, I'm, I could be butchering this too. I think he, he had a certain set of uh, a word count for the day. I think that's what he tried to like aim for before he left or like a, a time of day, like after 5.30, like stop because if you're trying to rush it or force things, it's not going to be good. And that's, yeah. any, and that's what he does. And then he has a deadline obviously for his, you know, manuscript and that's what he does. And I'm like, that's not bad of a gig. I would yeah. love to get up, go to my office, right. <laughs> go work yeah. out, have some lunch, go for a walk, come back, some more. pour myself. Yeah. Pour myself yeah. a cocktail. It, it would be really cool to be able to put out two or three books a year. I think he does about two i think i think it's one of his three of own pushing, writing and then if he does then he does the robert b parker that's my favorite author and that's who i like that's the whole setting that i like to read and he does one of the series for them for his estate and then i think he does that so he does that book for half the year i think i could be wrong but i mean that's but it also sounds like i didn't go to school for journalism yeah. So that's a con. A pro was, I mean, I was creative writing, so I know what I'm doing, but journalism also, that's a lot of, I know a lot of people say, okay, you're an English major. You're either going to teach, you're going to write for a newspaper. That's what I've been told my entire life. Yeah. Maybe you it. It was, was it called like creative nonfiction or something like that? That's, just... I took a class on that actually, two classes on that. I don't know if that's at all something that could be useful for writing a newspaper, but you know, great enough. It's take a, a current event and then just, no, creative nonfiction is literally anything taking an event that happened in your life and like just Spicing it up. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know. I I know the biggest. I we had to write three of them, and one of them I wrote about how I went and saw. I had a counselor on campus because I was at first. I had I was very homesick when I first started going to college. Uh, yeah. And then I would go see him once a week and then it, you know, I calm myself down and then it would be once a month. And then I use those sessions. Like I didn't incorporate a lot of them because it was over the course of four years, but I picked bits and pieces of like towards the end and what we talked about, spiced them up a little bit. And then that was like my final project. Right. So that's kind of how it, you take real world events. So yeah. not to, talk about this again but like if your parents divorce you could that's a creative nonfiction, like you could story <laughs> that you could write about yeah or you know something like um for me it would be like creative nonfiction thing would be about how my grandmother died and she asked me all these different questions for her for me to do for her after she died like that's another story that i could write yeah all right so that's it's another that's another way to go that i could you know that we could both put on as a, considered it's also considered a short story yeah or um maybe i'll do a story about my parents divorce see if i can write up a spicy story about that i've <laughs> uh that's the last time i'm gonna bring it up i promise i'm sorry <laughs> until next week until next week but th that's how it that's how it um, usually works. I mean, the guy, my professor who taught the advanced class, who also said that cliches about writing in the wilderness, wrote about a murder happening in his hometown, and he that really studied kind of cliche. He 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 studied it and whatever. And his parent and the parents of the 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 victim were pissed off for a while that oh. he did something like that. I'd have to. 
I can't remember. I wanted to actually buy the book and read it and see how he did it. I can't remember what it was called. Me neither. But it's on Amazon. <laughs> if I could plug it, I'd plug it, but I can't remember. But I was what that was a little rant, but that's I guess that's a both another pro and con. Yeah. Being so, told you're not gonna amount to anything because you write fictional fairyland things. Yeah. Yeah, and that actually uh, that reminds me of there's a, there's a converse, conversation that I've heard here and there about the the difference between literary fiction and genre fiction. With literary fiction supposedly being this sort of writing or creative writing with a purpose, you know, it has some kind of real meaning behind it. But then genre fiction is just everything else, you know, like basically everything I've written, you know. Harry Potter, like there's nothing, there's nothing like of literary value behind it. And that's the idea. So there, it's not, yeah, it's not like so kind of same thing with me. My novel is not going to be the next, it's not going to teach anybody. It's not going to have meaning behind it. It's yeah. not going to promote social issue or it's not going to promote something like that. Yeah, it's kind of like how, like when you think of To Kill a Mockingbird, it's like, you know, there's a, I think that's a, an, a, an example of literary fiction where it's kind of elevated above the rest because it's, because of that i don't know if i'm giving the best definition of that but i know that's some that's one thing but that's more of a thing that's within the writers community which actually brings me to my next con which is people outside who don't often write who don't understand uh writing or like i guess it's they don't understand how like maybe the difficulty in trying to make it as a writer or the you know, like, you know what I mean? Where yeah, no, I know what you mean. You just just to, kind of giving to, you, like, yeah, you know, it's like there's people, I mean, there's people in my family that will, that will be like, oh, you wrote this. Well, how did you come up with 70,000? Like, people who just don't, they don't grasp it, they don't write, so they don't really understand it. Well, how, how do you, how did you do this much? Or why haven't, you know, how, what's so hard about making the next step? Or, you know what I mean? I, I think that, uh, that, disconnect i guess has, has always left me kind of hesitant i mean for a long time it left me hesitant to actually ever be public about some of my writings i used to keep it all kind of to myself for the longest time until maybe four or five years ago and so i guess that's one of the cons is having to i mean i kept all my writing for the most part to myself yeah i mean i the first it's funny because the first I'm going to use this fact and like when I finally make my audio podcast, whatever you want to call it. But the first story that I published on my website, I submitted it to, we. Had, so we had a literary magazine for people to, for students on campus in college to, um, you know, submit their short stories, nonfiction, and then art pictures or art so they can get it published. And I was actually funny thing. I was in the, in that uh, group and I was the head fiction committee person. So I had to help pick and choose, you know, whatever. So I submitted that one and we went and it was all anonymous. So you didn't know who wrote it. And the people in my group said it was awful. They're like, this is so cliche, whatever. And I, I was just sitting there like, wow, okay. <laughs> so we're not going to submit this one. Ooh. So for a while, I kept that one yeah. in the feedback sometimes. Yeah. But it was good because, I mean, they were, they were all not so, like, they were, it was a different lens that my group, a couple of the group people were looking through, which was fine. I wasn't going to critique any of what they were thinking. And then I had, then I talked about, you know, publishing, making a website for a while. And then I had a neighbor actually who has published some Greek anthology books here. He read it and he's like, this is pretty good. I just, you know, do it. And then the pandemic happened. I didn't really have much to do. And I just said, one day, screw it. I'm going to make a website and promote it. <laughs> to this day, that is the, the most viewed story that I have yeah. on my website. I mean, I, when I was rereading it to like record it, some of the stuff was like, okay, this needs to be tightened up a little bit if I yeah. really want to, you know, you could tell it was written four or five years ago, not recently, Yeah. if you compare the two. But so it, 
it could sit on it for a while, but if you have that, if you get that one little spark that someone says, okay, this is actually pretty good. Then you just, I just took it from there and ran with it. Yeah. But. yeah that kind of reminds me of, uh, I have a, an aunt up in Michigan who, yeah, I haven't seen her in years, but she sent, it would send me cards, you know, like, Oh, Hey, I, I saw that you had a book and I, you know, I just bought it and I read it and bought, like, it just, you know, she didn't ever have to say anything like that, but you know, when she said when she sent me that card, oh hey, yeah, you, the book's pretty cool. So, you know, don't give it, don't give it up, keep going. It's kind of like, you know, it is. It's um, I don't know if inspirational is the right word. I mean, it, it is, but it's it, motiv- it, it is inspiration, but it, you know, yeah, it mo- yeah, it motivates you. Like, okay, I can still do this. Like I, um, I have a book. It's like a mem- I have a memoir from my college, another college professor. Um, I can't, it's too far away to grab, but he wrote about his uh, celiac disease. Is that yeah. where you're not allergic to, or that's where you're allergic to wheat gluten. and gluten? Yeah. So he, he showed one day in class, he showed us like one page from like the editor and it had, uh, and she used red pad and it had edits on every single yeah. line and i guess his agent said do not look at it do not read it don't just you can't because if you go through it it's going to piss you off so for three days he went did like i think he said he went to the bar for three days and just didn't look at it or read it or do anything because it would have pissed so it's not just us as independent writers you have a, a college professor who has a semi-successful i mean it's not world renowned memoir yeah. that and you still have publishers that just that's what they do that's their job is just to eat it alive to make sure which is also a good thing and they may yeah. they're making sure that it's the best quality content that you could possibly have to achieve your goal of becoming successful yeah i've, I've heard a couple of editors over the years you know i mean i hired them when i was living at home still so i could dish out the money for it but i mean they always like at the end of the day, like they always provide a very valuable insight because I mean, at the end of the day, also you're, you're only looking at the story from your own personal perspective and you absolutely need other eyes to see from, you know, a completely fresh unbiased view of, you know, oh, well, this makes sense. This, this makes no sense. This seems forced. This doesn't seem developed well enough. You, know, you, you kind of, you kind of have to have that. And, yeah. Or it's good to have it at the very least. If, if you really want to reach that next level, I feel like, and that's, you know, I, I wish I had more money to spend on editors for my yeah, current stuff. Me, me too. <laughs> but it, it's, it's not cheap. It's, I, I think one time it cost around 700 bucks. Another Jeez. one was, I mean, it's, it's, oh, shit. it's not cheap. And, and, you know. and it's also like, I, I have a story too, like a mini story too, like how you said your aunt told you in a car that she read your book and to keep going i mean i said uh i have a friend who like kind of looks over stuff like my writing to see if it what you know it's a it's a different viewpoint what needs to be fixed you know or recommending things and then she read it and i I, the first text message i got back was just whoa and i'm like what she goes this is this is when i set her rational and she goes whoa this is this is something I've never, this is incredible. This is something I've never seen before. And that made me feel good. I was like, it was, you know, it was one person that I've known for, the, you know, college, good friend from college that I've known for the last four years, four or five years. And it was just, it just made you feel good that something that I created, put on a piece of paper, made someone was like, wow, this is pretty, cool. this is pretty damn good. So it's the little things too. Yeah. That, that makes you. So there's, I feel like we've established that there's more pros in writing than cons. I mean, there are definitely going to be cons. There's pros and yeah. there's cons in everything that you do. Yeah, I, I think most of the pros, I, you know, the pros, uh, uh, most of the pros, I think, comes from, I think I sound cheesy, but it comes from within, you know. A lot of the pros is just, it's it's just, it. you feel good when you write. I, I feel good when I write. I mean, I feel, I feel better, you know, if I'm writing about something that, you know, is bothering me or, Yep. Yeah, it's you know, it's not necessarily just in writing stories, but it's you know, keeping a journal. I've got this really thick, old-looking journal right here that I, you know, that's impressive. Yeah, uh, it's really cool. I love these old pages, but I mean, I don't write about 
life all the time, but I write about, um, you know, whatever's going on in the world. If something big happens, I'll write about it, you know. Um, I just start, yeah, I write in a journal too. It's mostly like just kind of, I don't do it every day. It's just kind of when I'm feeling not, you know, normal. Yeah. I just kind of, I write in the third person, just say what it's, we're not in the third person. Technically, I guess it's kind of like, I mean, I don't, I don't you know, know it is more first person. I was going to say second person, but it's just even because if sometimes not all the time, I can, I can't establish the story behind it or yeah. create something. Cause you know, last couple of stories I've used to personal experiences to write and help it, you know, you feel better about it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when I can't do that. I just write in this thing. It's really, it's really weird how, like, I don't know how to explain how or why, but just that having that, like having being able to like take the experiences you go through and then just flush it out on on paper it's it's like a it's a very good uh co- i want to say coping mechanism in a way it is a coping mechanism because it's, it's it's the way you're describing it is how i used to feel when i used to talk to my counselor at school mm-hmm. like i'd have stuff not every week yeah. that like stuff would happen or i would be homesick and then you talk about it because once yeah. you, you like during the week i'd compress it down not try to get upset during in front of my friends yeah or during practices or whatever and then you'd go talk to him and you just flush it out and like you were you didn't even feel sad that day and he'd make you cry <laughs> for like 45 minutes and then you walk out of there and like i feel good so it's yeah. the same difference you're writing yeah to well, make for, and you just feel relief so like a for, release for me like i don't i don't really talk about stuff so it's same <laughs> probably bad unhealthy um but i just i don't know, i never i never really did like growing up or anything like that and so um i guess that's probably why i started writing when i was younger too is it just became a good outlet for things and that certainly has slowed down you know like writing is probably my main outlet for life I mean, and you know, I, it just so happens to also double as potential, you know, career. career. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I use my my mom and my dad, and sometimes my grandmother, grandparents as a crutch, or a couple of my friends. But after a while, you're like, you can't really be telling them the same stuff how you're feeling. So I yeah. just, you know, I write it down. It makes, and then you read back. You know, sometimes I read back. And I'm like, why did you feel like you didn't need to overreact like this or feel like this? Everything was, yeah. All right. Yeah. We definitely... should get a. We we need to like a, like a, therapy. Uh, therapy session. <laughs> well, not a therapy session, but a, we should get sponsored by, yeah. like Better Help. I've yeah. heard of Better Help or something like that. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I, I will say like for my journal, like I put a lot of like there's a lot more like raw emotion in this than you would find in any of my stories, and so sometimes this is a way of kind of like grinding it all down so that I can put it into a story, which is kind of a weird way. Like you know, it's actually we talked about it last week about how, or was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago? You know, writing when you're really in the heat of the moment, you know, when you're really like maybe really angry or just passionate about whatever emotion you're in, and how it's probably not the best way or the best time to write. So, if in that moment, you know, if you throw it in here, you can look back at it and say, hey, maybe, you know, maybe bits and pieces of this can be used, or you know, maybe you know, wow, you were really irrational and stupid, you know. Sometimes I look back at some of the old things I wrote and I'm like, wow. Yikes. Good thing well, it's some, a journal no one's ever going to see. <laughs> I know in uh, like the, the short, the second person stories that I put out, I've definitely put a couple little sayings here and there that I've been told or I've called myself. Just a little like, little like, don't, don't be a mental midget or whatever. I've been told that before. I use oh, really? that. I've used that and uh I think that's that's in my third story. I think bitch muffins another one. That's a good one. My buddy calls me that. I've called myself that. But that's more towards <laughs> that's that's more like jock lifting the heavy weight sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it it's just whatever whatever works, I guess. And that's sometimes calling myself a bitch muffin or a mental midget helps. It's weird and doesn't it doesn't make any sort of sense, but it doesn't have to make sense to every, everybody as long as it you know helps yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever you got to do to keep it going, mm-hmm. I suppose. 
without being forced. Like, yeah. Without be, especially writing. If you're forced and stuff, then you should just stop. So Fair I guess enough. I guess one last con before we wrap up is if you for I guess being like forcing yourself to write doesn't always produce the best that the best content. So yeah, yeah. having to wait to be inspired or having that inspiration to touch your novel or write a new short story is that's a con because it doesn't happen every day yeah yeah you know? it's it's hard like i for me i go through i can go through months of not having that kind of feeling but sometimes like right now i'm kind of in it which sucks because i, I don't really have the kind of time that i want to really put into writing but you know i've been looking at some of my old like fantasy based projects you know and i'm like I really want to, I want to jump at this, but I I, I want to read Tolkien first before I really dive into fantasy because you know he's he's kind of like the father of the fantasy genre, you know, the elves, magic, and all that stuff. I have elves and magic in my story, so I felt like it'd be a good idea to go to the guy that really, you know, laid it all out. And the same That's with why. you know some of the other stories. I want to I want to do more research. You know, I call it research, but it's really just reading the, the foundational uh literature on it so yeah. well that's what i do this i'm doing research too i do i read and then i also I actually go online and make sure the way of like detective way of thinking doesn't have to be like to a t but the general works of it you know i should problem. probably i wish i could write along with like i should have done this when i was home write along with the cop for a day just see yeah. what it's like. I, mean, still good. If, I'm pretty sure I don't know if I really want to do it here, man. No. Small town New York <laughs> from where I'm from compared to here. You go, could do drive around go to, in a cop car. So right, fun, fun fact, a little bit of information. I, I have a cousin in Winter Haven. It's like Polk County. It's uh, east of here, northeast of here. North, yeah, northeast. Okay. And then... I was I gonna say, say if you go any more west, you're going in the Gulf Coast. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's gonna get a little wet. Um, but uh, I, I, I got a, I've got a cousin. I think it's a cousin whose brother is like really high up in the the county's sheriff department. So I mean, theoretically, I could probably. And it's a, it's a smaller town. It's not. I wouldn't call it a tiny town, but it's you know smaller than St. Pete. So oh, okay, it's maybe open up right, if we, you want. Yeah, we might we might have to head that that would work because I always I also thought about like okay should I go to a because I've never shot a gun before in my life should I go and like to a gun range and just see what it's like to shoot like a yeah that cop would, you, issue you like a police a issue better. gun yeah you know yeah but, I, that's always all I thought about that too yeah I mean it's it's a good idea I mean if you did that you could actually you could describe the sound of a gunshot better you could. Yeah. You know, if you shot it yourself, you could say, "Oh yeah, you, you, you pulled the trigger." You, you remember how, you turned the safety off the moment you exactly in. how how it actually feels because you I could go online right now and type in how, gun sounds whatever, yeah. you, but I don't know pow. the technique. Pow, boom, look like a look like a comic book background because yeah. <laughs> then I you know that's so I for me anyway I have to do real. I have to do like more research other than just reading yeah. because I have to make sure it's accurate too. Yeah. It's uh, definitely important. I guess that's, I wouldn't say that's a con of reading those that or writing is having to go and kind of find those experiences so that you can write about them. That's kind of, it's pretty cool. I would say I mean, again, it go it, it touches back on experiences. That's, I mean, that's that, you that, that is the core of what writing is. It's it just, really is. You're writing down someone's experiences. It doesn't have to be your own, but something that you've either witnessed or been a part right. of. Watch. Right too. Oh. Yeah, it, it goes on and on. It, but I guess uh I guess that's it for this one though. It goes on and on until it stops. So, so we could we probably could talk about this for another hour and a half. Yeah, <laughs> that would be long. I don't know if our listeners would be able to handle another hour and a half. Of I don't know if I would. <laughs> but, oh uh, man! Oh well, it's it's been real. It's been fun. Um, it's been real fun. <laughs> uh, be sure to um, 
you know, uh, give our social media. Uh, I, I got to think about what I say before I say it. Can't form sentences mid conversation. All right. Like and subscribe to this wonderful YouTube page if you are watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Spotify, Listening. follow of us or whatever the thing is. <laughs> are, we, what are you going to say? I said listening on Spotify, yeah. you can't watch. You can watch the screen as you listen. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I stare at my phone as I listen to music and podcasts on Spotify. I do things a little bit differently. Okay, that's fine. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you're watching or listening on Spotify, do that thing I said before. Follow. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you know, click the, I think there's a little heart button, you know, add it to yep. your uh, thingy. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously follow us on, on the Twitter on the Instagram, on the LinkedIn, because you don't want to miss not only these episodes, but our actual content. Check out our merch. Kyle's got it on again. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to wear this shirt till the end of my days. Still still working on a hat. One of these days, I'll be wearing the the hat. I think I'm going to go out. I got to get a sweatshirt so we don't have the same shirt. I'll get a crew sweatshirt. But... (laughs) I think I don't know if they do hats. Um, I I couldn't find one yet. Yeah, I that might I be an outsourced. Say, yeah, yeah. I'll have to hire another company. Unfortunately, but you know, <laughs> if you want hats, put it in the description below, and you can. Yes, maybe, if maybe you we'll, prefer a hat. Yeah, I mean, no one's bought anything yet, so I don't think there's that much of a demand for anything at the moment. But that's what this is around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah buy it. Buy a t-shirt for your loved ones. They might not know what it means, but they'll enjoy it nonetheless. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely, uh, if, you have, if you have any comments or uh, thoughts, you know, maybe if you're a writer and you're watching or listening, well, if you're listening, you have to go to YouTube probably. Or I don't know. If, I don't think you can do comments on Spotify. I know there's polls and stuff like that. And sometimes I think maybe maybe I can open up a comment section on Spotify. Or maybe it's only through Anchor. I can't remember. I have terrible memory. But if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment tell us uh, what you found the most interesting maybe what are the pros and cons of writing to you what don't you understand or what don't you get about writing maybe a question you know we are watching uh this comment section of all the comment section 24 7 so you know, i might have been kidding 24 7 so you know let us know leave a comment like subscribe all that good stuff check out andy's new stories we have irrational came out like two weeks ago we got the newest well actually by this time this comes out four weeks ago we got irrational we got the second one because i can't remember names uh i made it i made it okay that one's out fresh and then by the time this drops there will be a third one yeah three you don't want to miss those um should here's a question here's a crazy question should they be read in the order of release or chronologically they need to be read by the release date. It makes yeah. more sense if you read Irrational first, because then the second one's a prequel. And then the third one um, incorporates, it, it kind of acknowledges the first one and a little bit of the second one. Like there's, there, 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 I've strategically put a couple sentences or thoughts here and there to be like, okay, this is why I connect to the first one. This is why I connect to the second one. All right. So Makes sense, read man. those. Definitely read those in release date order. Darn tootin'. All right. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, if you're still watching or listening, you're the best. We love you. <laughs> you're literally the MVP. I mean, I would jump out of the screen or the phone and give you a hug because you've actually made it like 50 something minutes. That is impressive. But uh, I'm afraid it is time for us to go. So, you know, we'll see you next time. Stay safe. We love you.